Okay, so our first speaker um, of uh, this afternoon, or this morning, or this night, depending where you are, it, um, is Shani Eberstein Sigalov, who's an educator, researcher, and free knowledge advocate focusing on bridging gender, language, and social gaps in free knowledge projects. So I'll now hand over to you. Hi everyone, let me just share my screen. Can you see my screen now? Wonderful. So hello everyone and uh, thank you John and the Science Museum uh, for facilitating this webinar and for hosting me. I'm very excited to be here. My talk today will focus on what happens when cultural heritage institutions work with Wikidata with an added lens of also collaborating with educational institutions. More specifically, I'll share insights and preliminary findings from my PhD research on Wikidata as a learning platform. This webinar focuses on the magic that happens when cultural heritage institutions work with Wikidata. I am suggesting that when adding educational institutions to this equation, it's double the magic. In fact, GLAM and education routinely go hand in hand, with many GLAMs even having specific objectives relating to education or learning. It is my hope that this expanded equation of GLAM education and Wikidata will help inform the rest of the presentations you'll be hearing today in the webinar. The content that will be showcased here has been informed by my experiences as an open knowledge advocate, as an open knowledge advocate, working with a variety of institutions from GLAM to educational to governmental institutions. As an educator experimenting with Wikidata and actually with Wikimedia projects in the classroom and as a researcher at Tel Aviv University. My research on Wikidata as a learning platform provides a global perspective of different case studies and discusses their benefits. Of the many cases, I'll be focusing on examples related to cultural heritage in educational contexts. So let's dive in and explore examples from the US, the UK, Spain, Israel, and Brazil. My first example is of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. In 2017, the museum announced a new open access policy, releasing 375,000 images under a free license. To increase access to this collection, the Met hired a Wikimedia in residence and later a data strategist who facilitated a mass upload of artifacts into Wikidata. The goal was to explore how semantically representing the Met's collection in Wikidata helps visitors explore and learn from a collection on such scale. I'd like to mention three outcomes of this project. First is unraveling links, connections, and relations that were not known before, as you can see here from the results of this query. This is the painting of a, a, a very well-known painting known called A Portrait of Madame X. A Wikidata query here revealed that the painting inspired the creation of a dress worn by Rita Hayworth in the film Gilda. This connection between the painting and the dress was unknown to the curators of the Met. But once the painting's metadata was expressed in Wikidata, these connections was revealed. Second is the Met Museum dashboard, also known as the Met Open Access Portal on Wikidata. Using different tools, this portal allows users to explore the Met's collection, both statistically and visually. The slide here depicts the portal which uses a tool called Integrality to track the completeness of the collection. The tool automatically generates statistical reports per specific criteria based on Wikidata queries. These tools help users explore large-scale data collection, including getting visual representations of both existing and missing items. Finally, from the Met, the depiction Wikidata game. Here, users make micro contributions to Wikidata by, by playing a simple game. An AI suggests what is depicted, for instance, that a picture includes a tree. Then a human checks the suggestion and decides if a tree is indeed present. Once approved, a statement is added to Wikidata. 
allowing users to explore paintings that portray a variety of objects. In a broader perspective, this allows users to get accurate answers to new types of questions, therefore allowing new types of research not possible before Wikidata. Moving to the UK and a bit to Madrid. Um, the UK has been an important hub for cultural heritage and Wikidata work with an abundance of projects that promote learning and inspire many. You'll be hearing more about some of these projects today, but I'll briefly mention three of them. First, I'd like to mention the Bodleian Libraries at the University of Oxford. Adding the data of a collection of antique astrolabes to Wikidata allowed the creation of a website that you now see on the slide, in which most of what you see is automatically generated by Wikidata queries. This allows exploration of the collection in an engaging way, adding new relevant data, making the collection more sustainable, findable, and usable. This is basically a proof of concept. Replacing the astrolabes with any collection breathes new life into it, allowing better usage and engagement. Again, from uh, the UK, this time Ox Scotland and the University of Edinburgh, an academic scholarly database that was no longer maintained and was not accessible to the public was imported into Wikidata, giving it new life and allowing the creation of this wonderful website you'll see later on of the Scottish witch hunts. Related to the UK, but actually in Spain, in Madrid, in the Prada Museum, a UK timeline expert, Navina Evans, who you'll meet later today, developed a tool allowing visitors to create interactive multiple lab timelines and exploring the museum's artifacts in context. This feature will soon be added to Histopedia, which Novino co-founded and made available to the public for everything on Wikidata, which is very exciting, I think. Moving to Israel, I've been experimenting with Wikidata in the classroom since 2015. In October 2018, I opened the first four credit course in the world to feature Wikidata. Imagine the great projects you could do with students throughout a full semester, especially when collaborating with cultural heritage institutions. But here I will actually focus on a more typical case where Wikidata project is an alternative assessment in a course that has another topic. In this case, this is a Bar Ilan University in Israel where I supported a semantic web course in an MA information system program. To create a practical project with social impact, we collaborated with the Israel Antiquities Authority. What you can see here on the right is word documents of the uh, authority about buildings in Old Akko. This is a um, um, city near Haifa, since this CLAM has no digital database, students are working on mapping the data in these files, making them available and reusable via Wikidata. Once in Wikidata, it's very easy to showcase them on a map, create a timeline or a bubble chart, telling the stories of these buildings in new, fresh and engaging ways. I'm moving to Brazil now for the last few examples. that are gonna be again very brief. This is another important hub for Wikidata and education and cultural heritage. I'll look at examples mostly connected to João Alexander Brzezinski, a professor at the University at the School of Journalism in Sao Paulo, who worked with his students on a variety of Wikidata projects. In the first example that you see here, Wikidata was used to reconcile data from various databases on the killed and disappeared during the Brazilian military dictatorship. Using archival material donated by the Brazilian archives via Glam Wiki collaboration and investigating data from different databases, students examined the work of bots, making informed decisions on each case and adding info into Wikidata. Wikidata was used here to reconcile disagreeing data from various external databases. The list of the killed and disappeared, which never existed before, now was now automatically generated and is maintained on Wikidata, helping to highlight a piece of Brazilian history. Another example from Brazil is auto-generating content. 
Here, the students worked on automatically generating a semantic wiki book, an open textbook, or what we call in education OERs, Open Educational Resource, about a collection in Brazil's Paulista Museum. The wiki book is created mainly by contributing data about pictures in the museum catalog or by playing a simple Wikidata game, which contributes to the data curated in the book. The data added to Wikidata is then extracted using queries and added into templates that generate the Wikibook automatically. The same technique of auto-generating content has been used in Wikipedia, first with the Met, and then updated by the Brazilian community that now has a Wikidata-based tool called Embable to auto-generate items in Wikipedia about museums, libraries, archives, theaters, books, movies, newspapers, and even earthquakes. This is especially important for less resourced countries or smaller languages as auto-generated content can free volunteers to focus on things that cannot be done by bots. Another example from Brazil is creating new digital objects that did not exist before. In this case, students helped to map all the monuments in Sao Paulo, verifying their location at local, as local authorities lacked the resources to do such work. Students physically traveled around the city to document the monuments, adding the data, including coordinates to Wikidata. This created a new digital object um, of the monuments in Sao Paulo, which you uh, now see before you, this is actually an interactive map, and that didn't exist before. The last example is a sad one, but also bears optimism. In 2018, catastrophe struck Brazil when their national museum was burnt down, a huge blow to Brazilian culture, as whatever digital objects that were in existence also burnt. Here, Wikidata was used as a hub to digitally recreate rooms in the museums based on data crowdsourcing using a tool called Tabernacle. This is not perfect, of course, but such processes of data archaeology, especially in multilingual ways, would be very difficult to achieve without Wikidata. To conclude, We've examined a selection of case studies depicting a variety of Wikidata uses in educational and cultural contexts by early adopters of the platform. The goal was to unravel existing patterns and examine Wikidata's potential for learning, um, for education and research in all disciplines, here focusing on the cultural heritage context. Analyzing the cases revealed 10 main uses of Wikidata that induced learning with each case study demonstrating one or more of the uses. Um, due to lack of time, I'm actually not gonna actually read you all the, the different uses, but I think you can see them in the slides, uh, which are also going to be shared later on. These uses suggest that some of Wikidata's relevance and value stem from the ability to get specific and accurate answers to questions that were previously difficult or impossible to address. The findings also suggest that an important aspect of Wikidata for education, cultural heritage, research, and learning in general is the visualization of results. Data visualization appears to be a key element in Wikidata's power as a teaching and learning tool, allowing us to explore not only what is there, but also what is missing, question the results as well as learn in context. It allows us to tell stories with data in a new and engaging way, making sense of the abundance of information around us. It also focuses learners on utilize critical, to utilize critical thinking, a key skill that the digital age, in the digital age where we don't question answers we get from AI agents like Siri and Alexa and encounter fake news on a daily basis. In that, Wikidata appears to drive users towards acquiring a higher level of data literacy. Finally, Wikidata empowers less established communities or emerging communities by offering opportunities to semi-automate content creation in local languages. 
this is only allows this not only allows projects with positive social impacts but also helps close different knowledge gaps and biases that exist on Wikimedia projects. To conclude, I hope that by now you are all convinced that glam education and Wikidata indeed equals love and that working with Wikidata does allow some much needed magic to happen. It is helping us learn about the world, make sense of the abundance of information and tell the story of what it actually means to be human. And this is just the beginning. I hope you all join us in exploring it further, pushing the boundaries of how it could be used to assist humanity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shani, for that wonderful presentation. So many different examples. Um, I think we've got time for one question, so I'll combine the two that have come through on the Q&A because they are related to each other. One is around guarding against the creation of false histories if false information is entered and connected to that, um, preventing the various inherent biases of contributors from translating into, into Wikidata and open education resources. Yeah, I mean, these are excellent questions that actually the, the Wikidata community is very much um, thinking about constantly, right? There isn't a one good solution at the moment, but you can see how at least Wikidata is allowing us to, um, this is the example that I showed from Brazil, to reconcile different uh, data sets, which is highly important, right? Because before we would go to one resource online and we will see one date of something or one piece of information, we'll go to another and we'll see something else. And Wikidata is actually helping us curate all that information in one place, showing us also the references. So this is a good first step. I can share that in terms of the developments on Wikidata, what we would like to see is more ability um, to, let's say, rank the different references that we add to Wikidata. So it's easier for the community to know which reference is a good reference and which one is not. There are also all the other technical um, abilities that the, the actual platform allows us. So it's a wiki, right? Everything done could be viewed, reverted, and the community keeps monitoring the, the data added. So basically, um, you know, it's a work in progress, just like Wikidata, just like Wikipedia that everyone knows. Um, it's it's going to take more people and more efforts. Also, machine learning and AI advancements are helping us to, to get closer to monitoring everything in a more informed way. So there's a lot to look forward to. And uh, there are advancements that we're working on in terms of making references more reliable on Wikidata. Great, thank you. That's a really positive way to finish. Um, <laughs> I'll hand back to John Stack, who will introduce our next speaker. Thank you, everyone. Great, thanks so much, Johnny. So our next speaker is um, Jason Evans, who's the National Wikipedian uh, at the National Library of Wales. And I'm now going to spotlight. 